Today I will uh, present you some cases uh, uh, and I will speak about uh, the treatment of the atrophic maxillae with uh, um, lateral sinus lift. First of all, I will present you some uh, papers. The first one is meta-analysis uh, made in 2016, in the year 2016, in which the authors have seen that uh, the predictability, the survival rate of the implants positioned in uh, augmented sinuses with uh, lateral approach, uh, the predictability is the same than the short implants positioned in the atrophic maxilla without any sort of regeneration. For short implants, we mean uh, implants between uh, 5 and 8 millimeters. I want to start with this paper because uh, it's very important to understand that in the last time, in the last years, the use of this technique, the lateral approach, is much, much less frequent. Nowadays we try as more as possible to rehabilitate the posterior atrophic maxilla with short implants. These results that we have found in this meta-analysis are confirmed in another meta-analysis that was published in the year 2019 and in which the conclusions of the authors are the same than the previous meta-analysis. But they have seen that the marginal bone around the short implants is much more stable than the marginal bone around the traditional implants. This is another element in favor to the predictability of the treatment with short implants. The last paper I want to speak about is the systematic review of the literature of the Cochrane, in which the authors have seen that the only one cases in which the lateral approach has a higher predictability, and predictability than the other approach in the atrophic maxilla is when the residual bone, crestal bone, is less than 3 millimeters, is between 0 and 3 millimeters. When the bone is between 3 and 5 millimeters, the crestal approach has the same predictability than the lateral approach, but is much less uh, aggressive for the patient and is uh, and the patient prefers this sort of approach for resolve the crest in the maxilla with the residual bone that is more than 5 mm the predictability of the short implants is the same that the traditional implants positioned in augmented maxillae with lateral sinus lift or crestal sinu sinus lift. But you can understand that using short implants that they have the same predictability, we reduce the surgeries, we reduce uh, the morbidity for the patients, the surgery is much more conservative, and we reduce the costs for the patients. The costs, the costs from a biological point of view and from an economical point of view for the surgeon and for the patients, especially for the patients. Now I will present you some cases in which uh, I want to show you the technique for the lateral approach that I use that I prefer. But remember, in all the cases in which the crestal approach or the short implants has the same predictability than the lateral approach, use those techniques. Because the first goal is save, is save the biology and save the money of the patient. This first case is a female with an atrophic maxilla in the left side. This is the, these are the tissues before the surgery. And uh, I performed a crystal incision until 
the distal, usually the distal aspect of the last tooth in the arch, but in this case I have extended the, the um, releasing incision, the vertical inc releasing incision, until the mesial aspect uh, of the last tooth in the arch, because the sinus had uh, a prolongation of its cavity in a mesial direction. The second step for me is to perform an osteotomy with the piezo surgery instruments. With the piezo surgery, I can uh, be more delicate, uh, I can preserve the Snyder membranes, uh, and um, I think the approach is much more um, biologic for the surviving and the integrity of the Snyder membrane. After this, I try to crack the cortical plate of the maxilla with the hammer very, very gently, and uh, then I try to remove this cortical plate with the, the instruments that I usually use for the detachment of the Snyder membrane. This is the cortical plate that I preserve in the PRGF until I repositionate this cortical plate in its own original position. I use PRGF or PRF that I prepare, and in this case I mix with the uh, biomaterial, it's bovine anorganic bone, treated with PRGF. PRGF is uh, coagulated and I obtain a plastic, a plastic mass that I can easily condense into the sinus. Here you can see all the literature about PRGF. What we know today is that uh, PRGF uh, increases uh, the quality and uh, the speed of the healing process for the soft tissues. We don't have uh, any evidence uh, about what the PRGF or the PRF or the, the PRP can do about the increasing of the survive rate of the implant. We don't know nothing about that. Nothing is evidence-based dentistry. We don't know if the, the, the bone is, uh, uh, the formation of the new bone is, is uh, more, um, uh, is faster with the use of PRGF. We don't know that because the data in the literature are very different. We don't have only one type of results in the literature. What we know with evidence is that the quality of the healing of the soft tissue, soft tissues is higher, and that's all. But uh, from a practical, clinical point of view, it's very comfortable to position the biomaterial inside the cavity that you want to fill if the biomaterial mixed with PRGF has a plastic consistency, it's easy. And the biomaterials don't go, doesn't go around, around, but it stays there because the, the PRGF has a sort of uh, um, properties, uh, adhesive properties, and the biomaterial seems to attach to the bone around, maintaining the position in which I put it. Now I show you other uh, papers published in the literature. You can uh, see them to confirm what I told you about PRGF, PRP, and other um, platelet uh, derived uh, um, prepared from the, the, the blood. After mixing uh, the biomaterial with PRGF, this mix is positioned inside the sinus, the sinus. After that, we position the crystal, the, the uh, buccal plate 
of the bacille bone over the biomaterial. Everything then is covered with two, three layers of PRGF. This is very important for two reasons. First of all, these PRGF membranes promote the healing of the, sur the surrounding soft tissues. And second, the remineralization of the corticotomy of the buccal plate of the maxillas is improved in a significant way. The sutures in double layer, mattress sutures and simple stitched sutures. The reentry is after seven months. You can see the perfect restitutio di integrum of the buccal plate of the maxilla. You can see through the cortical plate, the bovine bone down, back to the cortical plate. Then I position two implants, and this is the convenient image after implant positioning. This is another clinical case that's very important because I want to show you some situation in which our surgical procedure is complicated. As the first case, the incision is crystal. In this case, the releasing vertical incision is made that distal to the last element in the arch. The corticotomy. In this case, the corticotomy was very difficult to be performed because of the presence of the septum inside the, inside the sinus. The septum inside the sinus, when are uh, thick, are very difficult to be treated to remove the cortical plate of the maxilla, to have the access to the sinus, to the mem uh, Schneider membrane. And as you can see from the following slide, this septum had a very wide base. So when I tried to fracture the cortical plate with the hammer, it was very difficult to do it because uh, the cortical buccal plate was uh, stabilized by the septum. You have to try to crack the cortical plate gently to go away, to go ahead, and then finally you can uh, crack, break uh, the septum. Another uh, difficult situation in this case uh, uh, is the thickness of the cortical plate. You can see in this slide that uh, the thickness is about two, three millimeters. Remember, as more is the thickness of the cortical plate, as more difficult is your corticotomy and the removing of the cortical plate. This is another view of the cortical plate. In this slide, you can see another complication in this case is the perforation of the Schneider membrane. When I have a perforation of the Schneider membrane, it's not a big problem. I can treat it with the PRGF or PRP, what you want. I can treat it. Show you. The membrane, the coagulated membrane of PRGF is positioned over the perforation. But it's important. You maintain this membrane just four or five millimeters or more out from the corticotomy. It's very important because I'll show you in the next slide. If it is out from the corticotomy, you, you know if when you condense the biomaterial inside the sinus, you know if your membrane is uh, moved. And if your membrane doesn't close anymore the perforation of the membrane. You maintain the membrane even some millimeters 
out from the core dichotomy. And look at the next slide. When I have condensed all the biomaterial, I see my membrane coming out from the hole. And I know in this way, only in this way, I can know that this, its position is maintained and the biomaterial is not gone inside the sinus. Then, the cortical plate is repositioned in its own position and then covered with two, three layers of PRGF, PRP. Look at the sutures, double layer, always mattress suture in the deeper layer and the simple stitches in the upper layer. The healing. And uh, when we make the reopening, I want to show you the soft tissue management. The incision of the flap starts more palatal because I want to move a piece of keratinized soft tissue from palate to buccal plate, to buccal position. In this way, I can obtain a piece of keratinized tissue around the healing abatoid, as you can see in this slide. And look after one week of healing in the next slide. After one week of healing, I can appreciate the presence of two, three millimeters of keratinized tissue. This is very important, especially to increase the compliance for the patient in the oral hygiene. For the daily oral hygiene, it's very important. It's much more easy, it's much more comfortable, the oral hygiene, if I have a little, just a little piece of keratinized tissue. And this is the finalized case. But look at the buccal view of this case. Look at these two, three, two, three millimeters of keratinized tissue that stabilizes the tissue, stabilizes the tissues around the implant and make more easy the oral hygiene procedure. Next slide, you can see the X-ray after the healing and the follow-up after 10 years. In this other case, I want to show you the combination of the sinus lift with the correction of the crystal defects. In my clinical practice, I always treat uh, at the same time sinus lift and crystal defects. It's very, very rare that you can treat only the sinus lift. You always have a defect. Remember, when you make a sinus lift, always, uh, almost always, you have uh, the last tooth in the arch is the canine or the first premolar. Okay? Da distal to the last tooth in the arch, you always have a very, very thin crest. So, when I perform a sinus lift with a lateral approach, I always correct the thickness of the crest just distal to the last element in the arch. When you prepare the biomaterial, consider to always correct the thickness of the crest just distal to the last element in the arch. Always. This is the um, combine in which you can see two defects. One at the, in the area of the second premolar and the other in the area of second molar. Look at this uh, a section of the combine in which you can appreciate uh, the distal defect, which is uh, less contentive than the medial defect that I will show you in the next slide. 
and is much less predictable in its treatment. This is the defect distal to the last tooth in the arch, that is the first premolar. And look how it appears intrasurgically. It's very containative defect that is very predictable from a regenerative point of view. But if you go to see the other defect in the region of second molar, we can see that the defect is much less predictable. We just have a, a cortical plate in the buccal cortical, the palatal cortical plate, but we have lost all the buccal cortical plate. This distal defect is much less, co less contentive. So, obviously, we proceed first with the lateral approach and with the PRGF membrane, we uh, cover the little, the very little perforation of the Schneider membrane that I had two or three little perforations that you only can see with magnification device, about half a millimeter one perforation. But I used the membrane of PRGF to cover them. And then in this case, I have used fresh frozen homologous bone homologous bone, prepared in bone chips, and then I cover, I have covered with my cortical plate, uh, buccal plate that I have conserved in PRGF. This is the cortical plate repositioned on the bone chips. Look at the next slide. Here you can see the correction of the me mesial defect. Distally, this is the correction of the defect in the second molar region. And then I have performed an overcorrection of the defects with uh, all the fresh frozen bone I had. And then all this was covered with several layers of PRGF membranes. This is the last layer of the PRGF. The sutures, the reentry was performed six months later. And look at the quality of regenerated bone, especially in the area of second molar. Look at the overcorrection of the defect. All the bunches I positioned in the area of second molar were still, still there, even if it was the less predictable defect. In the next slide, you can see the more predictable defect as it was before the, the, the regenerative procedure and after. We had a better regeneration in the less predictable defect than in the more predictable defect. And both were, were overcorrected. But I have found, after the healing period, the overcorrection only in the less predictable defect. This is the suture. On the left, the defect before. On the right, after regeneration in the implant simulation. These are the implants positioning in the X-ray aspect. And here you can see, after the healing period, you can see the insertion of the muscles that is in, at the crest level. That's why even here, more than the last case, the last case, more in this case is more important, still more important. I have to move a piece of keratinized palatal tissue from palatal to buccal. And look, the next slide. This is the hard thickness incision the tissue is moved buccally, and look in the next slide how much keratinized tissue I have gained buccally. After the healing period, look at the quality and quantity of keratinized tissue. It's very precious, especially 
for the compliance in the oral hygiene maintenance. In the next slide, you can see the finalized case. The X-ray. In the next case, you can see a female with a severe per periodontitis. After initial preparation, oral hygiene motivation, and periodontal treatments, we performed the extraction of the compromised teeth. Look at the insertion of the muscles that are in crest, at the crest level. Look at the poor quantity and quality of the soft tissues in the areas where we should position implants. But in the next slide, you can even appreciate that if I wanted only to regenerate bone with the lateral approach, I would have a coronal, root, coronal implant ratio that is unfavorable. If I want to have a correct coronal implant ratio, I have to regenerate bone even in a sovracrestal position. So, after the full thickness elevation of the flap, I performed the corticotomy, but you can see in this slide, in this slide the defect, the vertical defect, distal to the last element in the arch. I have to regenerate a sovracrestal amount of bone to have a correct crown implant ratio. So the surgery proceeds with the removing of the cortical buccal plate, the elevation and detachment and elevation of the Schneider membrane. Here you can see the cortical plate. The sinus was uh, filled with uh, fresh frozen homologous bone. Then the cortical plate was repositioned. And then you will see, we, you will see after the re-entry how we will have a complete, complete restitutio ad integrum of this cortical plate. We won't see any more the corticotomy line. And uh, before closing the flaps, I have corrected the thickness and the height of the crest. These bone chips were covered with PRGF, and these are the sutures. On the left side, these are the defects that obviously are more contentive, more predictable than the big defect uh, on the right side that I tra treated before this defect. Obviously, these two sides were treated in the same surgical uh, procedure. The corticotomy, the cortical plate is removed, then the cortical is conserved in the PRGF, the Schneider membrane is gently, very gently elevated with smooth instruments. Then, if I don't have perforation, I don't cover the Schneider membrane with PRGF membrane. I just condense the biomaterial, the fresh frozen homologous bone inside the cavity, and then I reposition the cortical plate. The defects are corrected with the same biomaterials that I have positioned inside the sinus, and then this is the PRGF membrane positioned over the um, biomaterial. The sutures, and after some months, the re-entry. Even in this case, you can see the insertion of the muscles that is at the crystal level. 
Even in this case, I have to move the keratinized tissue with the palatal as aspect to the buccal aspect. And look at the, the combined aspect after bone regeneration. Look that we have gained the bone tissue even coronally to the residual crest in the posterior sectors. This is on the left before the surgery, on the right after surgery. This is the right part of the maxilla. For the left part of the maxilla, in the left you see before surgery, in the right you see after surgery. But I want to show you in the next slide, first of all, we don't see any more the corticotomy. Look at the perfect restitution of the integral. And look at the sovracrestal regeneration. The quality and the quantity of the new formal bone. You have to consider that I have positioned two implants, length 10 millimeters, diameter 6 millimeters. Remember, if you can increase the, the diameter, it is very much more important to increase the diameter than the length of the implant. Why? It's the ge ge geometrical reason. Consider that if you double the diameter, for example, from 3 to 6 millimeters, to obtain the same increasing of surface, bone implant surface, bone implant surface contact, you should increase the length of 8 times. Okay? You increase the diameter of the implant two times to have the same result you should increase eight times the length so if you want to increase the surface surface contact bone implant you have is very much more important to increase the diameter than the length of the implant okay these are the sutures and this is the left side even here, look at the quality of the tissue. Look, look at the amount of regeneration. You don't see any more the corticotomy. Complete restitution of the integrum. And look in the next slide, the quality of the tissue. I show you in a higher magnification. Um, in the upper, you can see the convene before regeneration. And look in the next slide at the higher magnification. Look, look, the quality of the tissue, the mineralization, the vascularization of the tissue. And this is, these are the, the sutures. Always double layer. Now is the time to perform the soft tissue management. Remember what I told you at the, starting with this case, the muscle inception is very crystal, so half thickness flap moving a part of keratinized tissue from palatal to buccal. Look at, at this keratinized tissue. Look at the quality and the quantity of keratinized tissue buccal to the healing abutments. <coughs> and remember, it's very important to perform a half thickness flap because I don't want to lose marginal bone. In the next slide, I will compare the quality and quantity of soft tissues and the muscle inception before and after soft tissue management. Look, before and after on the right. This is the left side. Same situation than the right side. Half thickness flat. Buccal position of the, the keratinized palatal tissue. But look at the suture technique I have performed. I've performed a lot of metal sutures to perfectly adapt the keratinized tissue to the buccal aspect of the healing abutments. The situation before 
the soft tissue management on the left, before, on the left and on the right after soft tissue management. This is fi the finalized case, and this is the case with a control after 24 months. The re rehabilitation, prosthetic rehabilitation, and the occlusal view of the re rehabilitation. In this case, I want to show you how to treat the failure of a sinus lift. Sometimes it can happen that you have a contamination, bacterial contamination of the sinus, and the suppuration in a period that usually is immediate after surgery. I would say within the first two weeks, two or three weeks. The point, uh, the key point is that uh, when you have a failure of the sinus lift with superation, first of all, you have to remove all the biomaterial from the sinus. But at this point, the problem is that uh, the Schneider membrane sometimes, always, I will say, loses uh, its um, regenerative potential. As you can know, as you know, the Schneider membrane is a source of osteoblasts. When you have a superation, this membrane usually has a fibrotic transformation and loses its osteogenetic properties. That's why after a failure, I treat these cases with uh, bone blocks. In this case, I have used uh, a monocortical block, uh, fresh frozen from Ilia Crest. The block is uh, sited with a piezoelectric uh, instrument. then uh, surrounded by PRGF membrane <coughs> and then it is positioned inside the, the window but uh, before you have to cover the perforation of the membrane if you have a perforation because sometimes when you have these failures you don't have a perforation of the membrane. If you have a perforation, as in this case, before you close the perforation with the PRGF membranes, and then you position the core, the, the block of bone inside the wall. But how to do it? You have to square the hole. Then you have to measure it with the periodontal probe and to report that measures on the block of cortical bone that you have to resize with the same measures. The video that I will show you later explains you better this technique. At the same time, if you can see the implant in the region of the right canine, you can see that the bone is very, very, very thin. So I have corrected the bone in the region of uh, the canine, as you can see here, with bone chips, the same bone chips that I have um, um, removed with a scraper from the block of bone. Then I have co covered these bone chips with a PRGF membrane, two layers of PRGF membrane, the sutures, the x-ray after surgery and I show you the video in this video you can see the debridement the debridement is very 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 important is the key success of the procedure the debridement should be performed both with manual instruments the first step and then with the piezo surgery instrument the debridement in these cases is 40 minutes, not less than 40 minutes of the bridement. 
you have to remove all the biomaterial, the old biomaterial. And with the piezo surgery, you can use a lot of so, uh, saline solution to wash the cavity and to make it more easy to remove the biomaterial. Then you measure the cavity, you, you should design a squared perimeter with the piezo surgery instrument and then you can prepare your block. Then the block is positioned with friction with a hammer. Its uh, morphology is like a prisma. So the friction of the block with the bone of the maxilla obtain a perfect, a great primer stability. And it's very important. Here you can see the modeling of the bone. I, I try the bone. It's... Uh, too wide, so I will modify it, but in this uh, phase you see the closure of the perforation of the Schneider membrane with uh, many layers of PRGF. Look at these layers. the clo closure of the, the, the Schneider membrane. This is the third layer of PRGF, and then this is the block. The block is surrounded by a PRGF membrane and then positioned with a hammer very, 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 very gently. Look. Everything is covered with some layers of PRGF. And then, then look at the re-entry of after seven months. You can see after the elevation of a full thickness, thickness flap, the increasing of the thickness in the region of the canine that we have treated with the bone chips and the integration of the block of homologous bone with the surrounding bone. To increase the thickness of the crest distally to the canine, I have performed a split crest, then I have positioned two implants with diameter of 5 millimeters. It's a great diameter. Look at the implants positioned, the sutures. After three months, the re-entry. Soft tissue management, look at some laboratory phases, laboratory phases, but look at the quality of the soft tissues after the provisional conditioning. This is the healing, the restoration. But what I want to show you is a follow-up at 10 years in which you can appreciate uh, after 10 years at the con bean, the bone situation and the stability of the marginal uh, tissues of these three elements. This is another uh, occlusal view of the restored case, but look at the case after 10 years. Look, this is the cortical bone, the corticalization of the bone. Look, the stability of the tissues, of the buccal tissues, after 10 years. But what I want to show you is very, very important, is what it happens to that block bone that we had positioned to close the wall. In the literature, we don't know exactly. We don't know exactly what it happens 
to the homologous bone, to the homologous block bone, when they are positioned in the host. What we can see from these slides is a surrounding of the homologous bone from the host bone, especially in the next line. Look, we can see the regeneration of a new cortical bone, buccal bone, over the homologous bone. And the surrounding of the homologous bone graft and the implants from newly formed bone. It's very interesting. And it seems that the newly formed bone, newly bone, newly buccal formed bone seems to surrounding the cortical, the monocortical homologous block bone. I will thank you. I thank you for your attention. And uh, if you have any question, you can write me to my email address. Thank you very much.